This is Photoshop Fails, where we're going to take a look at the dirty little bits of Photoshop, all of those techniques and tools and features that you see and that are not used very well. We're going to take a look at how to use them, but use them well. Today we're going to talk about skin smoothing. So I have here this DNG file, which I'm just going to drag into Photoshop, and it's going to open up the Camera Raw Editor, as you see here. I don't need to do anything in the Camera Raw Editor. The image kind of looks the way I want it to look in the editor as things stand. So I'm going to open it in Photoshop here, and I'm opening it as a smart object. But I'm going to show you here when it opens. Uh, let's pretend that it didn't open as a smart object. So I'm just going to rasterize this layer. In fact, I'm going to go layer flatten image. So it's just a standard background layer. This is probably what you're going to see with any image that you bring into Photoshop. Now, let's take a look at the, the bad and the ugly. So I'm going to right click on this layer. I'm going to convert it back to a smart object. That's how you convert it to a smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. It may take a second as it's taking here, uh, but that could also just be my computer acting up. There we go. And I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we're going to blur the living daylights out of this. We're going to go, oh, not 165. We're going to go maybe 15. There we go. And now the beauty of a smart filter is I can mask this just to her skin. So I'm going to select the white of the smart filter and I'm going to hit command or control I to fill it with black, thereby covering up all of the blur. Because of course we only want to blur uh, her skin to take away all of those blemishes. And not that she has a ton of blemishes, but you know, we just want to do this for the example. So I'm going to take my brush and really quickly I'm just going to paint over her skin uh, and we're going to soften up all of her skin. I'm going to do a really hacky job. In fact, I'm going to speed this up uh, so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, there we have it. We have successfully smoothed her skin. You can't see any blemishes. The problem is you also can't see texture and she looks like a cheap porcelain doll. In fact, this is yuck, not just with a capital Y, but in all caps. This is yuck in all caps. We should go to thesaurus.com right now and find as many synonyms for yuck, disgusting, and unacceptable as we can because that's what we've got on our hands here with this kind of skin smoothing. This is not a good way to do skin smoothing as should be abundantly clear at this point in the tutorial. So how do we smooth skin properly? Let's dive in. So obviously with that in mind, we want to get rid of this terrible effect. I'm going to grab the smart filter here and just drag it to the garbage can. In fact, we can rasterize this layer again just by right clicking and choosing rasterize layer. We're going to use a technique, the proper technique I would say to smooth skin or I like to think of it as removing blemishes. In removing blemishes, you smooth skin to a greater or lesser degree depending on how finally you remove those blemishes. Beauty retouchers are going way in and, and adjusting like the very pores themselves and making sure shadows are lined up and pores aren't out of place and it takes a crazy amount of time um, but the results can be stunning. Um, that that seems to, that tends to give you smoother skin. We're going to go with just a generally smoother skin. We're going to use a technique called frequency separation and it's a technique that's all over the web but we're going to run over it very very quickly right here right now. You duplicate your layer. In fact, we'll duplicate our layer twice just so you still have your completely original layer so you know you're not losing anything. Shut off the top layer, actually name the top layer high and I'm going to name the top the bottom layer low. So we have high and low. I'm going to select the low layer and I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I'm going to blur this somewhere between 15 and 20 pixels. I basically like to blur until I don't see too much in the way of details. Here we go, 15.5 is cool. I'll square it up at 15 even just so we have the same thing and I will hit OK. Once I've done that, I'm going to turn the high layer on. Once I've turned that on, I'm going to well make sure I have it selected. Then I'm going to go image, apply image and I'm going to apply the layer to the low layer. Remember, we're working on the high layer, so we're going to apply high to low, and low is very blurry. So we're getting this really uh, weird sort of soft focus effect happening. We don't like that. We're going to change the blending mode to subtract, and here's the key. When you change this to subtract, it looks crazy, like you just blew this thing out. Um, I like to set the offset to 128. In fact, you kind of have to set it to this if you want this effect, or this technique, I should say, to work. Offset 128, scale of 2, and hit OK. All right, looks awful, I know. But what we've done is we've moved, we've, we've separated the detail of the image and put it on the high layer, and we have the color of the image on the low layer. So now that I have the high layer selected, I'm going to set it to a blend mode of linear light, and it's going to merge the image back together and give us an exact copy of just what we had before. There's the original image, there's the image combined with in, into this uh, frequency separation technique. What we can now do is edit hard blemishes up here on the high layer by grabbing a tool such as the healing brush tool and make sure we set our sample option to current layer because we're only working here on the high layer. 
So let's go ahead and grab the zoom tool and we're going to zoom in. We're just going to work on her face here. And basically you would work on it exactly as you would anything else. I'm going to size the brush down. You would hold your alt or option key and just paint over any blemishes you see. And this does a remarkable job of getting rid of blemishes very, very realistically uh, because you're really only working on the texture. If you have a blemish that's really huge and the colors are mixing and getting crazy, then you can go down and edit on the color layer as well, which is the low layer. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this video up and I will be back in just a second. Now, one of the other things that we can do that really helps um, in addition, well, you can see here when we zoom in, let's just take a look at her face. Let's look at before and after. So you can see we've gone ahead and we've really just gotten rid of any kind of little pock marks and indiscrepancies, things like that, and it makes her skin look so much smoother. And we're gonna do a couple things that'll smooth it out even more. One of the things that I tend to like to do is place a layer between the high and the low layer. So I've got the high layer selected to place a layer beneath and I'm gonna hold down the control or command key and I'm gonna click the add new layer icon and I'm gonna call this smooth. And what I then like to do is grab my brush tool and I'll right click with the brush tool. I'm gonna make a very soft edge brush to so set the hardness to zero and a fairly large brush. And then what I'll do is set the opacity of the brush to about 10%, very low opacity. And if you hold down your alter option key, you can select color from the face. So what I want to do is select like the highlight on this cheek and I'm going to paint around that highlight just one swath. And then I'm going to select here that I just painted over and paint over the highlight. So what that's doing is it's just sort of flattening out the transition of color on her face. So I'm going to start here in the shadow. I'm going to sort of extend the shadow, but then I'm going to take the highlight and I'm going to paint into the shadow a little bit. So you can see it's just really smoothing that whole transition. And I'll kind of do that with all the highlights and shadows on the face. There we got the highlight. Cover the highlight up a little bit. Here we've got the highlight on her chin. Let's paint away that shadow a little bit, then select some of the shadow and paint away the highlight a little bit. All right, we'll do the same thing here under her nose. Make the brush a little smaller and then paint the darker into the light area. Same thing with the highlight on her nose, right? We'll paint right up the side of the nose and we'll grab some of the color on the side of her nose and paint down the middle of the nose. And the same thing here, grab the highlight on the forehead, paint over just like so, and then grab part of the darker area and paint over that highlight. So you can see there's before and there's after. We're just sort of leveling out all the tones in her face. Now, if you absolutely insist on doing a little bit of skin blurring, uh, you can do that. And you can do it with frequent. You can do it, excuse me, with frequency separation. Select the high layer and throw a layer mask on it by just hitting the uh, whoop, the new layer mask icon right down there. And then in this mask, you take your brush tool again. And again, I leave the opacity very low. I've got it at nine percent. Let's just even it up at tens. We're working with the same thing here. You want to set your foreground color to black, so you paint away some of the detail. Of course, when you paint away detail, what do you do? You're really blurring the image. And this can be an effective way to add just a very little bit of skin blurring. You can actually add a lot of skin blurring doing this. Uh, but this is a very, very controlled way of adding it where it sort of needs to be added to soften details a little bit more. But it's not really my favorite thing to do. In fact, if you do do this and if you smooth skin this way, you can add some sort of new texture back in by using this technique. Check this out. We're going to add a brand new layer by hitting the new layer icon and we're going to name this texture. All right. Next, what we're going to do is go edit fill and fill this with 50% gray. Now that we filled it with 50% gray, we're going to go filter noise, add noise. Now a couple things here. We want to add a, a reasonable amount of noise. I'll just start with 25%. That looks pretty good. You want it to sort of look like that, that television static signal look. Uniform ought to be checked on. You can go with Gaussian, but uniform is just a little finer. I like it a little bit more. And I always check monochromatic on for this kind of thing because it just eliminates all that color. So monochromatic on, good. Hit OK. And now that we've done this, well, let's shut it off for a second and just look at where the light is coming from in the image. The light is, I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to grab the brush tool and let's, let's do a little uh, uh, check this out real quick. So the light is coming from over here and it's hitting her in the face that way. And as you can see, we have the shadow here and the shadow on this side of her nose, shadow on that side of her, uh, her of her chin, and in fact on her body, shadow underneath here where her chest and her stomach are sort of blocking the light from getting over to her side. So we know that the light is coming in this direction. All right, now that we know that, we can get rid of that layer. We just want that in mind because what we're going to do with our texture layer is we're going to go filter, stylize, emboss. And we want to set the angle because we're sort of making this nice little subtle texture. We want the shadow to be in the same direction as it would be uh, depending on where the light's coming from. We know the light is coming from about this 43 degree angle and striking down across her face that way. Um, I like to have a decent amount of height. Height too much just gives it this weird look. So go low on the height. Um, two actually looks really good. The amount is what I like to 
bump up because that really gives great definition. And we, if it's if this um, if the texture is too strong, we can always reduce it with uh, by reducing, excuse me, the layer opacity. So hit OK. And now that we've done that, I'm going to zoom out. And let's just set this layer. Actually, no, why am I zooming out? I should zoom in a little bit. I'm going to set the layer blend mode to soft light. And if we check out the skin on her face, she now has this very artificial texture. And it's all over the image, which looks really bad. So we're going to go layer, layer mask, and hide all. It's going to give us a black layer mask dropped right over that layer. Now what we can do is take that same brush tool. We're going to reduce the opacity way back down to about 10 again. Now we're going to paint with white, however on the black mask assigned to that texture layer. And when we paint with white, what we're going to do is we're going to paint that texture in place. So I'm going to paint the texture wherever I kind of want more skin texture. This also is going to add a little bit of a unifying element to her skin and really give it a nice smoothed out, uh, albeit somewhat touched up look. Just be careful you don't add too much to this noise. And if you do, you can see I switched my foreground color back to black by hitting the letter X. Um, and that just allows me to just paint away some texture if I see too much of it somewhere, like right there on the edge of the cheek. All right, so we can do that. And of course, you can be doing this to the arms and the neck and the legs, anything that would be in your photo, anywhere where skin is. So now that we've masked that in, um, one last thing that you can think about is dodging and burning the skin. We're not going to get into that in this tutorial because it would just go on for too long. But dodging and burning can add a, a huge element of smoothing. Again, just like we did with our smooth layer here, that gives that sort of well that sort of softens the uh, transition between shadow and highlight. Dodging and burning can do either one. It can flatten out or it can accentuate, and both in their own little way will add an element of smooth skin to your photos. The key in this tutorial, though, is not just to do this blanket Gaussian blur and paint it over skin uh, wherever skin is, because that, I think we all can agree, looks really, really bad. So I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key. There's the skin before. There's the skin after. So we cleaned it up. We smoothed it out. It still looks very realistic, and we got rid of any and all blemishes on her skin. Of course, the level to which you take this, you can make skin hyper-realistic. You can just get rid of necessary blemishes, like blemishes that aren't going to be there in a week or two. You can do whatever you want with it. But then that, in my opinion, is how you properly smooth skin in Adobe Photoshop, not the dumpster fire that is Gaussian Blur. That's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out www.tutvid.com for more free Photoshop and web design tutorials. See you in the next hey, one. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up. And going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool, too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. Right there. Thanks, guys.